Hi, um, it's Jillian from Jilly Bean Pottery again. Welcome back to my studio. Um, I wanted to share with you guys today just a technique that is really easy and actually is a better technique. A lot of people use um, sponges and I'm, if you've ever taken a class with me, which <laughs> you may not have, you will quickly learn that I am very anti-water. And the reason I'm anti-water um, is people tend to overuse it. They tend to use it to smooth everything. They get their sponge out and smooth. And what that does is on a piece is you're wiping away the fine particles of clay and you're leaving behind all of the sand and grit and grog. And grog is a um, pre-fired clay. It's been ground up and mixed back in for strength so you can build. So the sand and the grog are all added to help you build, but you don't want that on the surface. You want a nice smooth surface. So um, and because, you know, it's it's pre-fired, you know, it, it just comes to the forefront anyways. And so helping that along with taking away the nice soft fine particles is not helpful. Um, the other reason why I'm anti-water <laughs> is that, because there are multiples, um, is that because I feel it weakens the structure of the clay. And so, so many things, it's, it's almost like a, it's a crutch and people learn it early on and they think, oh, this is great, but ultimately it weakens the clay, the softer the clay, the harder it is to go big, the harder it is to get your structure to stand up. Um, and so you remove that, those soft fine particles and you're weakening your structure, which is not good. And you know, people are going to argue with you. <laughs> a lot of people are very pro water. I am not pro water. Um, I'm happy to argue all that all day long. Um, and for those wheel throwers out there, if you think, oh, this is just a hand building thing, I'd love to ask you how tall you throw because usually when I ask that question, the pro water people only throw a few inches tall. The less water you use when you throw, the taller you're going to get with your pot. So just some things to think about. Thoughts for this morning, Wednesday morning. It is Wednesday. <laughs> and um, I wanted to so share a tip, you know, a place, a time when a lot of people use water is smoothing the edges. So these are coasters. I'm making coasters now. And <laughs> um, they're a lot of fun. And they're just really tiles, 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 coasters, whatever. Um, and these are leather hard. And leather hard is a state where the clay is still wet. Um, it's cold to the touch of your cheek, um, but it's not flexible anymore. So I can, you, you know, I, it, I can, um, you know, I can't bend it at this point. If I push too hard, I'll actually break the piece before I'll bend it. Um, but I can still dent it with a fingernail if I needed to. And so this is a perfect state for me to handle the clay um, and do what I'm about to do. And a lot of people will look at these cuts, which I don't know how well you can see that, those cuts there on the edge. And they'll look at those and they'll go, oh, you know, especially here, like this little corner is gonna, no, I just knocked it off. Anyways, they're a little rough. And any of you who've worked with the clay before know that these nice sharp corners, what will happen is as they fire, these get like knife sharp and you can cut yourself. And so you don't want that, certainly for functional wear. And you know, this is, you know, it doesn't have to be a tile, it doesn't have to be a coaster. It could be the edge of a plate. It could be the edge of a mug. It could be whatever. And this technique I'm about to show you I actually use on all my plates as well. And so um, you don't want this, you know, super sharp thing. Now the nice thing about doing it at leather hard is, or what I'm about to show you, is, um, you know, I can handle the piece a little bit more easily without distorting the shape. I've spent a lot of time drying these nice and flat. So, um, and just a quick tip, for those of you who are looking to dry tiles nice and flat, the trick is to sandwich them between things that are flat. Don't use boards that aren't flat because I've totally been there. Doesn't work, won't be flat. But <laughs> if you dry them, no plastic, no nothing, just dry them between the boards. They will be nice and perfectly flat. I'm handling them right now to clean up the edges and I'm actually gonna stick them back for a little bit longer between the boards just to keep them nice and flat. They can dry out completely there. Usually at leather hard, you can actually stop worrying about it and pull them out, but I like to be overly cautious. And so that's what I'm gonna do. Now, um, you know, I was doing this, I'm like, oh, this is a great tip to share with you guys. You know, how do you clean up this edge without water? What a lot of people like to do is they reach for a sponge and they smooth the edge with a damp sponge. Why is that a bad idea? One, as I already said, you're going to remove all those nice soft particles of clay and you're actually going to reveal all the grog and sand in the clay and it's actually not going to be as smooth as you think. Um, and you're going to remove all the stuff that you want to keep. Two, even though I'm handling this and it's leather hard and it's safer to handle, you're going to weaken this and you could bend it. 
right? Now you've made a gooey edge and you can distort it in some way. So that's not a good idea. So what do I do instead? I use two tools, um, a rasp or a sure form. Some people call these sure forms. And I use a flexible um, rubber rib. Um, this is a sure form that comes from like Home Depot or Lowe's, any home improvement store. Um, you could probably even get this at Walmart. Um, the nice thing about it is these uh, metal things pop off Mine's not popping off right now to show you, but they pop off and you can buy replacements. So you don't have to always buy the whole thing. Um, and this is just a plastic handle. Um, some people prefer the mud tools version of these. I have one, obviously, as you can see, it's the same idea, same exact um, thingy here. It just keeps it in a slightly different curve. You'll see this one's a little bit more curved and this one's a little bit more flat. This is a great tool. I don't like it because <laughs> I'm a dork and incapable of doing this the correct way. This handle doesn't tell me which way the, the, the sure form will scrape. It only scrapes one way. It only scrapes this way, not this way. Um, and that depends on how you're holding it. This I always know. So <laughs> I'm, this is more just my own idiosyncrasy. Most people love these. They prefer the handle. It's much more uh, workable for them and you can use these tools to trim pots on the wheel you can use them for all sorts of things you can use them for what I'm using today but um, <laughs> this is a great tool Michael Sherrill mud tools fabulous tool this too removes and you can change it out it's the exact same one it just this keeps it at a better curve I just I'm a dork gotta use this one now where I will say mud tools is great this is a mud tool um, rib um, they come in different colors and this red one by the way this is not an ad I'm just telling you what I use you can use it or not or whatever Home Depot by Cheryl mud tool and you can see well used because it's starting to go clear um, it's uh, nice and flexible so I like that you can use any flexible rib it doesn't have to be mud tools um, okay, so those are the two tools I use instead of a sponge with water. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to sure form or rasp this edge here, a little bit of the middle, and this edge here. And I'm going to do that all the way around. So I don't know how well you can see this. I'm trying to hold it in front of you. You might not be able to see that one. I do the middle. I don't know why I do the middle. I just do. And then I do each edge. You could probably kind of do um, each. And I, I always focus a little more around the corners because they tend to to go differently. And you can go back and I try to remove. Um, so here's the undone. That's the undone. Here's the rasped one. You can kind of see it's already starting to look a little bit more finished and round versus this undone edge right there. So I'm going to do that to all the edges. And it's really fast. Um, it's nice to do this at the leather hard stage in addition to all the things I've said before because the rasp works better. If you try to do this on a um, really wet um, piece or wetter piece than leather hard, um, you can even do this bone dry. It'll still work bone dry. Um, although this next step won't, which is why leather hard is kind of a nice stage, um, is I remove this in these nice big clumps. And now this is, I'm creating a lot of dust and if you saw my last video, you'll know that dust is really a big deal. Because I'm doing this at Leather Hard, these are still wet clay. Now all of these, you can't see this down here. I've been doing a lot of these. <laughs> um, you can't see this down here. There's a lot of um, uh, scrapings building up. And so I have to be really careful when I'm disposing of these. But right now, because I'm doing this at Leather Hard and what I'm scraping is still wet clay, right? I'm not creating the amount of dust that I would if this was dry clay. So that's something to keep in mind. If this is bone dry or edging towards bone dry, any point beyond leather hard, you gotta go outside or you gotta get a respirator because you're gonna kick up all sorts of dust um, in the atmosphere you're doing and you don't want that. So um, at leather hard, I'm still okay because these are still wet particles. I'm not kicking up the fine particles of dust that I am otherwise. Now, these, when I go to dispose of them, I'm gonna be extremely careful. I'm not gonna sweep them up and kick that dust up. I'm actually collecting them. You can't see, I'm collecting them on a canvas, piece of canvas, and I will fold up that piece of canvas and I will dispose of it in a trash outside. Um, so when the dust does kick up, it's all outside. And so that's really important, um, just health tip. Rib, rasped piece. I'm just gonna follow the exact same motions that I did with um, 
my rasp. I'm gonna go probably a few more times over it, but what'll happen is I will get a nice gray, almost burnished look to this. Um, those of you who aren't familiar, burnishing is a clay method to add a shine, a sheen to clay, and it actually seals um, the clay particles in so that it creates a nice um, smooth surface. It actually is used a lot in like pit firing and things like that to create designs um, and other um, things like that. And so it's a good way to seal up your texture. So here's the rasped. I don't know how well you can see that. The rasped piece. And here is the edge that I have just smoothed with my rib. See how nice and pretty, nice and beautiful it is. Okay. So what I'm doing with that is I'm creating this nice, smooth, I don't know how well you can see that. Uh, cameras are so much fun. Um, uh, a piece, and so, you know, you're gonna create this nice, smooth, I won't have to sand this later. Um, well, we'll talk about sanding another day. Sanding, I have a great blog post if you haven't seen it or read it, it's called Do You Believe in Sanding? I am on board with sanding, and I. I will take you guys through that sometime. Don't worry, that, that will be up next. Sanding is fun. We'll do it outside. It's important, safety, dust, lots of dust. But this is one of those things, you know, people, um, this is an edge that if you're not careful, you're gonna have to sand at greenware because it's gonna get, or at bisqueware, because it's gonna get to glaze. And if we haven't cleaned these up, we're gonna have a, you know, super uh, sharp edge and we don't want that. We'll cut ourselves, I'll cut myself. You may not cut yourself, you might be better than me. I will cut myself, but anyone getting that piece ultimately will cut themselves. And so, you know, you want to be careful. But this, you know, what I've done, okay, now maybe those of you pro water people out there might go, hmm, you know, that took her a long time. The sponge would be so much faster. Yes, but I am saving myself heartache, okay? I am saving myself heartache. I'm not removing the fine particles particles of clay. If anything, I'm compressing them to make them even more smoother and more relevant, you know, prevalent on these edges and when I get this out of glaze fire it is gonna be beautiful it is gonna be beautiful people you don't know so um, you know and it just gives it this nice super smooth finish and I can show you here's the before and here's the after I don't know how you can see that the lighting is weird in the back of my studio but you can see that and so that's you know a really nice um, clean edge and it looks nice, right? You know, I hold this up, it looks nice, it looks finished, it looks polished, and that's really what you want. So, anti-water, no water used. Till next time, see you guys later.